Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Chembu, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. I got my wife Chelsea here along with us on this flight and we're heading out to Yumbai Talk to deliver a lawnmower. I'll tell you more about that once we get started. All right, Niners on, fuel pump on and low start. Just shut down a minute ago, so I'm waiting for my ITT to drop on down below 200 before introducing my fuel. Because I shut down quicker, the ITT is going to jump up a little bit faster than normal, but it still only peaks out at 685, so still a nice cool start. Generator on, prop forward or V2. Once our amps come back down, I'll throw my alternator on my auxiliary bus. Anyways, yeah, we're heading out to Yambai Talk if you've watched any of the elder videos. Uh, they had to cut it by hand, 1,600 feet. It'd take them about a week to cut it by hand with bush knives, and by the time they'd finished, they'd have to kind of start back over at the other end. So we started to GoFundMe back in the summer, I believe it was, um, to pick up this lawnmower we got back here, uh, walked behind a really nice one, and had it shipped over here from the States. So we are dropping it off today. So yeah, we're really excited that they can, they had to get some like little tiny push mowers and stuff. So anyways, then I'll introduce my wife here in a second once we get airborne. All stations, Shembu 120.1, November Tango Kilo. We'll be departing Shembu for Yambai Talk. What is it, 6538, November Tango Kilo Taxi. Answering other people before me, so let me just go ahead and do all my checks. Flight cold, or fuel caps and selectors are good. Controls are good. We'll turn TAWs off because Betty might yell at us after takeoff because the mountains are right in front of us. Switches and instruments. We're 6800, so 6172. Rotate at 61. We'll land at 62 if we had to come back in. Maps are set, indicated, and verified at 20. Trims are already set. If we're not airspeed alive by that little cone, second yellow cone on the right, we'll abort otherwise. After takeoff pitch for 85, consider EPL. Consider feather. We'll make a right hand turn down to lower terrain. 84 flaps. I'll pull off and shut off. Emergencies, masters, and crack my door. All right, we'll do our SAR once we get airborne because he sounds pretty busy. All right, 25 degrees, we're 4,600. Oh, so, going to be in between that, so 1,400. So 1,350 for 1,400. Ignition, condition, flaps, 20 fuel and harnesses. 1,350 for 1,400. Center line eventually. All right, there's our airspeed alive. Rotating at 61. There's 50. There's 61. All right, we'll pitch over for 85 knots and just climb out at 85. We got mountains all over here, mountains in front of me. And then I've taken you down this one down here straight ahead of me. There's like a, a really nice low route. That's probably one of my absolute favorite valleys to fly down is that one right there. But they fly the Dash 8, so like the small twin engine planes in here, or they used to, Air New Guinea and stuff. This would be a really, really tight circuit for a bigger airplane like that, for sure. But anyways, this is my wife, Chelsea. I've been wanting to take her along on some flights, and this is really the first one that worked out, and it barely, barely worked out, but we are able to get her on this flight, which is nice, especially because we're doing a fun flight today, just taking out this lawnmower. Like I said, we've been working at getting this here for like six months, and um, so if you've been in part of the GoFundMe, Thank you so much for being a part of that. Huge, huge help for the guys at Yambai Talk and also the missionaries that live out at Yambai Talk so they're not out there during the week cutting the grass with bush knives. All right, now that we're up and going, we'll put our autopilot on and then we'll call up and then 
I'm going to ask Chelsea some questions. I've posted some uh, questions on Patreon uh, to give the patrons a chance to ask her some questions. So I have a list of some things that uh, some of you guys would like to know, uh, maybe a perspective from a Bush pilot's wife and some different topics like that. So once we get going and up a little bit higher, then we'll do that. Orsby 6538, November Tango, Kilo Departure. November Tango, Kilo, Orsby, go ahead. Orsby, November Tango, Kilo, departed Chimpu, time 3-0. Tracking 3-1-0 on climb 8,000, estimating Yum by Talk 0-5. I'll climb 8,000, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo. Traffic on 10 Kilo, Sierra Lima, ETA 45. Fast, uh, caution departed. Mostly for Hagen. The fast Yabon at 3, 5, 1, 7, 4, 1, 8, 7, Hagen at 4. Kilo Sierra Lima, November Tango Kilo. All stations in the Wagi Valley, 120 decimal one. Kodiak, November Tango Kilo. Just departed Chembu for Yumbai Talk. We'll be tracking down the Wagi Valley. Currently passing 7,000 on climb 8,000. Break, uh, November Tango Kilo, Kilo Sierra Lima, 120 yeah, November Tango Kilo just departed Chimbu, currently 8 miles to the west, northwest, 8,000 for outbound track of 310. Uh, okay, okay, so no conflict, we are just 20 miles run to uh, Mount Hog and 1,000, see you later. Alright, so he, here we are, the little blue airplane, he just departed Chimbu, whoops, Chimbu here, we're going to track up this way. And he is about right in here. Okay. He came in from Moresby, and he's going in that direction. So he'll be landing up here at Mount Hagen. So he's way up here, not even a conflict. But the iPad is more of a conflict. One zero one eight. Thank you, Kilo. Let me level off. I'm not paying attention. I'll stay at eight thousand two hundred to get over these clouds, and then we'll drop back down to eight thousand. Anyways, yeah, we use this to do everything that we have, all of our flight planning, as far as. Um, around here and then also we have all of our weight and balance stuff that we do it, this is the thing that Brent made up for us that that's a big huge Excel sheet that changes all of our weights from kgs over to pounds because this you can only put pounds in and different things like that so we also do all of our fuel calculations and whatnot off of this so oh. anyways yeah some patrons had left some questions last night that they wanted you to answer let me see if I can bring them up and just go through a couple of them. I would say probably the most asked question is, do you worry about Ryan while he's flying? Uh, no. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Nope. And do you watch his videos? And do they make you uh, nervous? Nope. <laughs> I don't watch his videos. I feel slightly guilty about it. Late, but <laughs> <laughs> but I don't expect you to watch my videos because I don't watch my videos. Thank you. you don't need, thankfully, you don't need that kind of affirmation from me. So. Oh. Okay. Oh, and another one was, uh, if you work, what do you do here in PNG, like at the mission base? I um, cut hair and uh, cut and color hair at the center. For our mission, as well as other missions that are, um, are near us, and so that's pretty busy. Yeah, that keeps you busy probably, I don't know, three or four days a week, typically. Yeah, sometimes more. Um. All right, so there's a gap right in through here. We'll probably go right past this cloud, and they'll probably open up, and we'll cut through that way. If not, we'll go down just a little bit further on down. But I'm thinking that there's the gap is right in this area, and I think I can get through at 8,000. If not, well, like I said, we'll just go down a little bit further. And it's looking like we'll just go down a little bit further just so I can stay at this altitude. I'll just drop on down to 8,000 now, because that's what we filed for. 
Living in PNG as like more of an undeveloped country from the United States, what is something that you do like about PNG that is different than the States? Uh, I think I like just the fact that it's not very materialistic. Like, you know, like the things that you have are useful and to make your life, but it's not like, I don't, it's just, so I like living it in a simpler way here. It's not as, like, busy. Um, in the States, we felt like all of our friends were never able to hang out with us and stuff because they're just so busy kids and their activities and all kinds of things like that. Whereas here, I wouldn't, on a similar schedule, it just seems that, uh, at least on our center, it just seems more relaxed and more uh, back to the basics kind of style. I don't know. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay, and this one was asked a lot too. You know how to fly a plane? Well, I know how to fly a plane. Yeah. No. <laughs> Do I care to learn how to fly a plane? And that was the other question. No. Do you have any interest in aviation whatsoever? I like being a passenger. Ryan drives too. I'm like on the states. I don't drive when he's around. It's just because I like to sleep. Chill. Well, sleep usually. <laughs> usually we're flying. I'm sleeping too. But I'm staying awake for you guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you don't really have any interest at all in aviation, do you? Oh, like, that's your, that's your thing. Oh, that's all right. I don't have any interest in haircutting either, so I think we're even. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is the gap I, I was talking about. Yeah, I do my hair. Yeah, I have my hair. What was something that when you first arrived in PNG, that culturally you were kind of like, wow, that's like so different or just kind of really stood out to you? Uh, like first first impressions, uh, it's there's a lot of trash on the ground, and we realize that there's not like very many uh, trash cans, and so that's different. So like there's no trash cans. Like okay, there's no trash cans. <laughs> that's weird. I mean, like littering is a big deal in the states, but here it's like okay, there's nothing. There's no place to put your trash, so we're gonna put it. Um, yeah. It still kills me when you're driving weird. behind somebody and they finish their coke can and they just throw it over There's and no it just it that. just kills me. So. Oh, that's weird. I think the biggest one for me was like how many people were out walking about. Like in oh, the I states, you never see someone walking down the sidewalk. Like. Well, there no sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, and here, I mean, there's just hundreds of people always walking, and the little kids are walking. You know. Sometimes like little five and six year olds are walking unattended and that's just completely normal. So I think that'd probably be the biggest thing for me was just like, wow, there's so many people out, just out and about. November Tango Kilo wants me one two zero to two one request. November Tango Kilo, go ahead. Norman Tango Kilo request, call uh, company Norman Tango Zulu on 128.5 and just confirm his destination in uh, WeWork at 1.5 next hour. Okay, yeah, I know that he was scheduled to go to Yambai Talk and then WeWork. I'll try my 1.285. November Tango Zulu, 1.285, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, go ahead. Hey, Moresby is looking for you. Um, have you left Yampai Talk for WeWack? Yeah, I left Yampai Talk. Uh, I got a hold of him on uh, 125. All right, thanks. Winds are starting to pick up there. It's uh, kind of a uh, head, uh, quartering headwind and landing with mostly a left crosswind. Uh, it was running about seven knots when I came in. Hopefully it's not any stronger. But it's not a tailwind, though. All right, that's fine. Morsby, one, two, zero, one, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, must be going. Yeah, I just spoke with November Tango Zulu. Uh, sounds like he got a hold of somebody on 128.5. He has departed Yamba yeah, Talk for WeWAC. Tango Tango Kilo, I guess. All right, we're just 19 minutes out. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my descent profile. Hit the flight plan page, we'll head down here to our altitude select and we'll go down to 1,500 feet because the runway's at 500, so pattern altitude's 1,500. And then we'll come down here and put in 800 feet per minute. Then it's gonna put a top of descent mark right there. And Betty will let me know when I'm at the top of descent as well. 
All right, well, we've got a little bit of time. We'll bring open the strip chart and go over that. Yeah, we'll hear Yumbai talk, like I said, elevation's 500. 527 meters and basically flat. So they used to have really long grass all the time when we'd go out there, but they picked up some of those little just tiny like lawn mowers that you'd have in the States, just like a little push lawn mower. I think they picked up a couple of those, and since then it's like a golf course, and it's like one of our nicest ones. So it'll be nice. It still takes them about three days to cut the airship, like half day work and whatnot. So with this thing, I mean, that thing is like three times the width as okay. one of those little push ones. This would be a huge help, because the people are doing it right now, and I know they're super excited about getting something like this. This calling must be one to zero one standby. So the wind is coming in from this direction today, so we'll have like a, a left crosswind, which is fine. I'll land with the left crosswind. Later on in the day, the winds are probably going to turn around and then there'll be a headwind, which is even better for takeoff. We'll probably be on the ground for an hour and a half or so. So what are some items that you would ship back from the States over to here that we can't get here? What are some items that we can't get here that we like to get in the States? Um. Uh, clothes. I think you can't get no. You can't get new clothes here. So, um, if you're looking for new items like clothes and shoes, like the shoes you get new here, but they're uh, uh, maybe it's like crappy, cheap quality. Yeah. They just fall apart it's after like a couple months. Quality shoes. Or less. So, or less. So probably all the knockoffs that I don't like quite make it. That don't pass code and make it to yeah. here. Which is like that's really crazy. So anyway, um, so yeah, we have shoes sent over sometimes. When we first came over, we bought a whole bunch of the, uh, shoes like the kids for all the sizes going up. But uh, now that they're older, we've been here for six years, we've run off all those things. Yeah. Um, we've already gone over our strip chart. The fuel selectors are good. Our Taz is still off. We'll start our descent here in just a second. That he's gonna let us know in probably five seconds. Vertical track. Oh, there we go, see? I'll put them very quick, Colin Mosby. Looks like it's really nice out there right now. If you guys want to fly this exact same flight from Chambu out here to Yum by Talk, um, I'm asking some of our patrons or if any of you guys want to develop some of these airstrips that are not on Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane and you want to develop them, leave a comment down below and I'll send you the details so that you guys can do this. I like posting this stuff on Patreon so that people can fly to the same locations and this is one location that's not on Microsoft Flight Sim yet. So if you guys want to help out with that, please let me know. I'd love to do it myself, but I just don't have the time. I think it's a really cool thing that you can do that and add extra things, packages and stuff to the game. And also, I would like to maybe introduce some new t-shirts on my website, but I don't have the time to develop and uh, design some new t-shirts. So if you're a t-shirt designer or you have some really cool designs or some really cool ideas, I know there's a lot of great talent out there. If you want, you can send me some of those kind of ideas and some of that stuff. So leave a comment down below and we'll connect, or you can connect with me on Instagram as well and send me a, a direct message as well. That'd be awesome. I'd love to be able to get some cooler designs um, for you guys. This valley right here, let me drop down a little bit quicker. This is one of my favorite valleys. It's super pretty. It's like all grassy stuff. Once we get around this corner, actually right through here. All right, that's autopilot off. We'll drop down a little bit quicker. If you have ear problems or whatnot, just let me know. That's fine. Uh, uh, it's a really, really cool, pretty valley of just like all grassy plains and stuff. I was gonna fly down lower, I forgot. All right, let's get my VREF set up now. We're at 60, about 6,600 landing, so our VREF is going to be 71 knots. The lights and inlet we'll get once we get a little bit closer. Right over here. All stations, Yon by Talk, 128.5. Kodiak, November Tango, Kilo, 13 miles to the east-southeast, 4,000 on descent. Circuit time, Yon by Talk, 07. Now the winds are whipping this way this morning, which is actually pretty good. If they were going the other way, we wouldn't be able to land. Uh, not with 10, 12 knots. Once we get past these clouds, it should open up right down the valley. Now this is the Jimmy Valley. I 
I've also put this on my Patreon so page so people can fly this valley up and down because it is like really, really beautiful. Uh. Once you get past it. Okay, I'm kilo, 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 I'm they're going against 83 degrees in here. Back into the air now. That's cold. There we go. Alright, landing light on or below 140 for our engine line to bypass. Sound of music kills. <laughs> Alright. Alpha Tango, Alpha Tango, Echo, Alpha Tango, Echo, Mosty, 185. Feeling sick with all these bumps. Oh, I take that mean. <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> oh, I don't. Do you don't normally have 12 knots of wind whipping down these valleys that, at 10 in the morning? Like this is pretty rare. Huh. Yeah, these are the hills and stuff that if I could ever be camping out here it would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Such beautiful views. Alright, we're landing on runway 21, so OBS runway 210. Our VRAP is at 71 knots. We'll come in at 1500 feet, so we're just 1700 feet now. We've already got our landing light, engine on the bypass. Go around. It's really late final to the left, power up, 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73, reset, all right, to T to 740. And winds are whipping out here now. Always be 6538 November Tango Kilo in the circuit. Yacht by Talk report after landing. Um, tango Kilo. Don't really know why, but if you say the whole spiel, then they hear you. But if you just say your call sign, they don't ever seem to respond to you. Oh wow, look at the grass. Now below it's super all blowing over. We've got what, 15 knots? That's awesome. Be like 15 knots of crosswind. Hopefully it slows down up there. All right, there is pattern altitude. Hopefully the winds are not whipping like this on the ground. 500. 15 knot drop crosswind would be pretty difficult, I think, getting into this place. All right, 10 degrees of flaps. We'll do so on the ground. Prop and harness is done. We're on 71 on final, 81 on base, 91 on downwind. I don't see the windsock. Oh, there it is. It's not really blowing any over top of the actual runway, so maybe most of the wind's sticking over there, or it's at this altitude. Maybe once we get down lower, it will slow down a bit, I hope. All right. We're around 1,200 feet, turning there, turning final 900, right about. 500. Yeah, it's really bumpy right here. All right, 81 on base, and turning at the tree, up there, at basically 900. Flap checklist complete. Pretty fast. Bouncing around. Uh, dropped off to eight knots now. All right, there's our air speed 71. Still bouncing around a lot. Seven knots. Looks like the wind sucks. Bouncing all around as well. So far, pretty good. Committed. All right, that was exciting. Lots of crosswind. All right, for the sake of uh, all those guys, we're going to park down here because we're going to be on the ground for a little while. 
Anyways, guys, if you guys want to see the video here on the ground of these guys uh, welcoming us, it looks like they're coming now um, with the lawnmower or whatnot, check out this link that I'm going to post up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you guys did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. And um, yeah, see you next time. Alright guys, thanks again for taking the time to watch and have a good one.